closer look at the training of Afghan security forces, part two. From Atlanta, I'm Gail McCabe. General Caldwell, you've been very proactive in the use of the media, especially social media. What kind of responses are you looking to get out of the use of blogging and Facebook and Twittering? The first thing that we were trying to do is just help inform and educate the international community what NATO training mission does. We have an incredibly vast area of responsibility that we're associated with. We ask each and every individual to feel free to blog, to Twitter, to, to, to write articles to their hometown newspapers, to engage with media, uh, with really no constraints whatsoever put over them. What's amazing to me is they have incredible stories to tell. And to me, there's nothing more powerful than a young soldier, he or she, sharing their experience in training in Afghan. They can tell it better than anybody else can. And so each time we can get one of them to share a personal experience, first-hand account, to me that then helps inform really the international community as to why we're there and what we're trying to do. Secretary Gates has come out with new media rules. How will this affect what you're encouraging your soldiers to do? It really has, we were already operating within really the guidelines of this, this, the new rules that have been put out. Okay. Um, what we tell all our folks, we have three rules that we give them. And the first one is whatever you're gonna write about or talk about has to be a first-hand account. The next thing we tell them is everything that you do, you must be responsible for. So if you want to write a blog or talk to the press, as long as you're comfortable with it being on the front page of a major newspaper like the New York Times or the Washington Post, with your picture, with your quotes, and the context in which it was done, as long as you're comfortable with being on the front page of that major newspaper, then you're probably saying something that's okay to say. And then the third thing we always just tell them is, you always have to tell um, exactly what happens. There is a new military leadership at ISAF. How does this impact your mission? I, I think General Petraeus probably said it best. He said, look, there has been a change in personality but not a change in strategy. And I think that's very important for everybody to remember. The strategy is sound. He wants to continue with that same strategy, and that's exactly what we're doing. There's no doubt that you're making strong progress, but in order to have a strong security force, you have to have a strong government. Um, how do you answer that? How do you handle those challenges? General Petraeus has been talking this at extensive length about how critical it is that we have a comprehensive approach to everything we're doing in the country. It's not enough just to build a security force. It's not enough just to work rule of law. You have to also work the governance, the economics, and they all have to be working simultaneously because to, together, collectively, that's what's gonna make a difference in Afghanistan. Your motto, sir, is team, transparency, and transition. Is it working? It is. Uh, we're very encouraged by it. We continue to make that the imperative of everything we do. Team together as an organization and with our counterparts and with the international community. Transparency in everything we do. And one of the key things we do that we don't really do anything classified anymore. Uh, everything we do is pretty much available to the international community to look at. And then the last part is transition. And that's really key. We, we tell everyone when you first begin to do something, you have to have already walked yourself through the end and worked yourself back saying, we're going to transition this off to the Afghans. So how do we set the conditions today to ensure that it's going to happen in the future? Many of the graduates that you have coming out of the Afghan security forces, the police and the army, as soon as they graduate, they're being asked to go into hot zones, combat zones. When they graduate, are they ready? You know, we put them through a validation at the very end, individual training, then we put them through collective training. And at the very end of that, we put them through a validation uh, exercise, determine how well they're ready and prepared to move forward. And what we have seen over the last three to four months is a steady uh, improvement in the overall quality. And, and we attribute a lot of that to the fact that there are more Afghans who are willing to serve in their country than ever before. And they do, in fact, want to make a difference and change things in Afghanistan. You paint a fairly positive picture What's missing? Leaders. Let's talk the Army. Today the Army is about 130,000 strong and we're short about 12,000 non-commissioned officers and 4,000 officers. That's 16,000 leaders short 
and a force that's today about 130,000. We, we recognize that we have this critical shortage where we have in fact brought more courses online to help us to train more of them. Officer Kennedy is gold. We have a military academy in Afghanistan that takes four years to produce a lieutenant. But we recognize we don't have four years to wait. And so we have brought more officer candidate schools online. And we're doing the same with the non-commissioned officers that help us identify qualified young recruits and then put them through a specialized non-commissioned officer development school. That's a closer look 